Well, it was the flood no one saw coming that almost destroyed a town and its people. When the clean-up cavalry didn't arrive, they had no choice but to roll up their sleeves and help themselves. It's been a slog and they're not there yet. Their spirit tested, but far from broken. Well, this is home sweet home. Yes, it is. This has been home for the last two years and could be for another six months or more yet. Yeah, realistically, we think we'll be back in here in 12 months' time. This is where we spent a lot of our time. This is life after a flood. Between a shed, a caravan, and an outdoor cubicle of a shower. Yeah. That's home. The yeah. Every driveway had a caravan, every backyard had a caravan. And many still do. When Rochester, two hours north of Melbourne, went under, almost a thousand homes went with it. We had water coming through parts of Rochester that have never seen water before. We didn't have a chance. So this is what we were told we were expecting, this area, and this is what we got to. 90% of the town washed away when the banks of the Campaspe River peaked in October 2022. By the time people seen the water at their driveway or their doorstep, uh, already Rochester was entirely cut off. Oh, we knew from the get-go that we had to save ourselves. The flood broke records, just as it broke the backs of the people of Rochester. Some of the rescues, the water was, was, um, was up over our shoulders. Cam Lovering from the RSL helped save lives, just like Brett Kine, who led his own home flood to lead the rescue operation with the CFA. As locals like Carmel, Tracy and Greg battled at their doorsteps to stop a flood no one saw coming. I mean, we had tractors running around with, uh, with, the, with the flat trays on the, on, on the back pulling people out. We had the local blokes, you know, with their, um, with their uh, fishing boats out. The town hardest hit became a town forgotten. And to watch the, all the support going above us and around us to head into Echuga, uh, it was a very frustrating time. 30 homes in Echuga flooded. Uh, we had 988, so it was, it was difficult to see. Two years on and Rochester still isn't back to normal. 200 houses here sit empty. That's 200 families yet to come home. In many ways, Rochester still lives with the devastation every day. But you won't find anyone around here complaining about it. The residents of Rochi have well and truly picked themselves up and got on with it. The shops are reopening. We've got the, uh, the silos are being repainted again now. Yeah, Rochi's rebuilding. Brett and his family of five watch their new house go up from their makeshift shack in the backyard. We spent uh, the first 11 months in two caravans and we made a little makeshift uh, lounge room here beside us, a uh, little temporary um, shower unit out the back. It was all fitted out with a uh, hot water service. A hundred millimetres of water went through his heritage home. But unlike hundreds of his neighbours, Brett's got an end in sight. Dozens of homes still sit gutted or are for sale in Rochester, and residents face climbing insurance premiums. The town experiencing an exodus in the flood's wake. So they virtually sold it at half price or less and took off. Vietnam veteran Greg Walkley and his mates at the RSL have been holding meetings at the pub, cafes and the Salvos since the flood. It's just beyond a joke. So it's been standing here for more than 100 years, yes. but you just can't get back in here? No, no, so we're limited to our beautiful gardens and, and the grounds outside. Cam's the president at the Rochester RSL and puts the weight down to red tape. We have to go through a broker and then the broker talks to the insurance company's consultant and then the consultant talks to the insurance company. But it's taking you two to three months just to get a question answered. Yeah, and, and, and an unbelievable amount of effort. It'll be another Remembrance Day outside as they wait for a builder, a price tag and a timeline for the new RSL. The town has been operating without a hospital and the local police remain in a demountable. The work won't end. 
you know, it, it'll still go on for, for years. The floodwaters swallowed Carmel Phillips' home. Two years on now and I, and I still, you know, feel like it was yesterday. She just put in a new kitchen and laundry. And to watch the demolition of a dream taken from you just within hours is just heartbreaking. Tracy Kine is a part of the town's flood mitigation group. We know our river best and we know what's going to help to help protect us in the future. So what we're asking for is to be able to release water from Epilock quicker and for longer. This week, surveyors engaged by the Campaspe Shire Council began reviewing buildings floor levels in Rochester to determine how to best floodproof each building. But the council's study into the flood and how to prevent another one is still more than a year off. Yes, Rochester's prone to, to flooding, it'll always flood, um, but just the, 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 the depth of it is, is what we need to change. In the face of Rochester's worst flood in living memory came a town that wrapped its arms around each other. We helped each other like Australians do. It's the beauty of a small town, isn't it? Everyone helps each other.